basic journalistic task is eternal. Yeah. It's, you know, for people like you to go into a complicated situation, maybe dangerous situation, figure out what's going on, and emerge with a clear, coherent path of information. That's the journalistic act. And then to be able to share this with, you know, an audience. Uh, and what we, our tools change through the years, you know, what we have just had newspapers, and we had radio, and we had television, and now we've got the whole digital age. So the tools change through the years, but the essential journalistic act uh, and the service it provides for the society is essentially the same. The task of the journalist is eternal. Tools change, but the, the, the basic task is, is still there. So through the years, we've added some language to the definitions we felt for explanatory, uh, we weren't getting enough emphasis on illuminating the truly complicated. So we put that language in the definition. Some of them we keep very general, like the one for international reporting, we keep that kind of open. But we rely upon the jury to bring its own wealth of experience and understanding so that they can look at uh, you know, 50 or 60 journalism entries in international reporting and determine which ones are the most meritorious based on their experience. They know what it takes to get these stories. They know what it takes to, to organize them and to write them. And so we rely on them for their judgment. Keep in mind that the Pulitzer process, as I said the other day at the press conference, is uniform. All 21 categories in journalism and the arts, there's a jury in each one of these categories. And that jury's task is to come up with three finalists, no more, no less and without a statement of preference. And these three finalists in all 21 categories go to the Pulitzer Prize board, which spends weeks reading all this material, getting ready for its annual meeting. And then the board goes through each one of the categories, considers the three nominations, and then makes a decision. And sometimes they, de they decide to give no award. This year, one of our categories, feature writing, it considered the three nominations, discussed them at length, had votes, but in the end, no single one got a majority. You have to get a majority vote in order to get a prize. So it was uh, long, late in the second day. People had been, been meeting uh, for long hours, and it was decided that there was no majority, so let's move on. So no prize was awarded in that category. Well, yeah, the fascinating people, the challenge of the job, uh, you know, we're we're entrusted with the most important uh, institution in, in America, maybe in the world, when it comes to uh, journalism integrity, the quality of journalism. Uh, it, uh, we're, we do two things, basically. We honor excellence in journalism, in books, in drama, and music. And we also seek to elevate these professions, to make them better, to... For in journalism, for example, we feel that the, the awards can become very important teaching tools for other journalists. They can go and look at these, they can see what won awards, they can see what really great journalism uh, entails. But every year we have some terrific uh, work that uh, you just shake your head at uh, how wonderful the, uh, the work was. So many of our prizes, if you look at it, they relate to uh, the watchdog of the, the, the press, of journalists, the watchdog, uh, calling to account powerful institutions, the government, major corporations, you know, other other holders of considerable power in society. And uh, that's a function that I think the founder of the Pulitzer Prizes, Joseph Pulitzer, was, was himself famous for, and which we've continued through the years. And it's probably one of the, well, it's clearly one of the most important functions of the, of the Pulitzer Prize. The other thing is that, you know, when you win a Pulitzer Prize as a journalist, you're not just joining other journalists, because the Pulitzer Prize is going to great authors, you know, Faulkner, Hemingway, great playwrights, great composers, great dramatists, uh, you know, O'Neill, and people like that. So we like to say that when you win a Pulitzer Prize as a journalist, 
or anyone else, any other category. You are entering the aristocracy of American excellence, which makes it very special. It's not just, you know, journalists. Or qualities for a good journalist, yeah. as opposed to a Pulitzer Prize winner, which should be a good journalist. Well, it should be someone very curious, yeah. someone very tenacious, someone that uh, loves to dive into complicated topics and uh, who uh, is very good at uh, dealing with people, knows how to get information, and then can put together a very compelling story, be a really good storytelling. And today, that means not just being able to research and write, but also to have some knowledge of digital tools. Yeah. Even if you don't know how to use all the digital tools, at least you have a kind of digital mindset and see the way with the video or uh, interactive graphics and so forth. I like to say what we need to produce out of our journalism schools are what I call, this is a complicated term, I call it tradigital journalists, tradigital, meaning it's a blend of the traditional skills of reporting and writing, blended that with the digital skills or digital sensibilities. So I call it tradigital journalism. Well, it's gone very fast. We've made a lot of changes, and uh, I, I leave with uh, certain bitter, bittersweet feelings because uh, we've done some very important things. I think we've really helped to keep the Pulitzer Prizes a pace with the changes in, in journalism. We brought them uh, more deeply into the digital age. Uh, and I've, you know, met hundreds and hundreds of, of fascinating people, like some of our prize winners. I've uh, had to recruit jurors. You know, every year we recruit 77 uh, journalism jurors, for example. We bring them from all over the country and they sit here for three days and go over 1,100 entries in 14 different categories and come up with three finalists in each, each category. And with selecting these jurors, I've been able to meet all kinds of uh, fascinating people. So, uh, another thing I noticed, as soon as I became the administrator of the Pulitzer Prizes, everybody returned my phone calls. <laughs> and, it wasn't <laughs> and it wasn't because I was any smarter than I was a week earlier. But uh, So I think when I leave, I'll probably have trouble getting my phone calls returned. <laughs>